Hey guys, it's Batman, and I'm here with another pen video. You know, lately on this channel, I did not plan it this way. I've been doing a lot of vintage stuff, and it just sort of worked out that way. And it worked out that way because from time to time, I'll find a decent deal, and I'll just go ahead and take it, work on it, enjoy it. Um, and uh, other times, because I went ahead and purchased something that may have been already restored. The past couple of videos, though, I've actually taken a pen that looked pretty bad and played with it. That's one of the things I like about the hobby is when I first got started, I was looking for an older pen. I wanted to find a vintage pen, and I didn't have anything. So I went ahead and ordered what somebody advertised as a Schaefer Imperial. No, it was actually Imperial brand, an old lever filler that didn't work because the, uh, the sack was all calcified. And what that led to is rather than me try to send it back because they represented it being in good condition, um, I tore it apart and I did research. I found out how to change an ink sack. So um, I've been doing that a lot. I uh, hit some Esterbrooks, some Schaefer's, uh, and you know, some Waterman's, and played with all of those in, until I got fairly proficient where I can change an ink, ink sack with no problem generally. Every pen has the potential for giving you a problem. I heard from other people where they saw that the last video that I had done on a Waterman tape right where they've experienced some problems, whereas every tape right I've worked on so far, I've, and I think I've resacked about three of them and had no problems whatsoever with doing that. Uh, trying to tear them apart beyond that is a little different story. Uh, but um, I've picked up a few hits and misses on the internet, uh, specifically on eBay, I have what I call hits and misses. You get one that's a hit, meaning uh, it turned out good. It turned out to be a good purchase. Then you have some misses where it was absolute garbage, or you overpaid for what you got, or you had to sink too much money into it in order to make it work okay. Uh, and basically, all you could do is maybe salvage it for parts. Well, today um, arrived in the mail a hit. And it's one of those where I've experienced a Schaefer fine line before. A fine line is a sub-brand of the Schaefer Pen Company. Schaefer's, um, you know, Schaefer was around for years and years, and they have some fantastic quality pens. It's my second favorite brand behind Waterman. And I've got a bunch of them here in my drawer, some of which I've worked on, uh, that were horrible and now write well. Today, it would be another one of those. Now, before I show you this particular fine line, I want to go ahead and show you the before pictures. I knew that this pen was in horrendous condition when I saw it on eBay. The pictures were very telling. What's funny is the seller said, it may just need a little light cleaning. <laughs> yeah, right, in the total restoration. Um, so <laughs> I saw the pictures, they were horrific looking. And I was like, there's, there's no way I'm going to pay, I think at the time they were trying to get $7.99 including shipping. I was like, nah, no, not, not for that. Uh, and then the listing expired, and they relisted it, knocked $2 off. Okay, $5.99. For 6 bucks, including shipping, I'll give it a try. Because as rough as this thing looks, I may just be able to make it happen. So I went ahead and ordered it. It showed up in today's mail, and I'm talking within two hours of it showing up in my mailbox, I had it restored. Uh, it being a Saturday for me. And uh, so I want to show you the after. So you just saw the before pictures. Here, my friends, is the after. Now, I already had a Schaefer fine line, which was this one right here. You know, a nice uh, red. It is not the quality of Schaefer, or Schaefer was known for. This was a sub-brand. It was made to be an inexpensive, possibly student pen back in the 40s. I'm going to place this in the 40s. I may be wrong on the time, but everything I've investigated so far does not tell me what dates or what range so far. And I've looked in several locations, some of the message boards you normally would go to, and I'm not getting any decades in which Schaefer uh, fine line division would fit. Um, but I'm going to keep looking, okay? But so I'm going to guess somewhere in the 40s. Nice lever filler. It's got the, the typical lever that you're going to find on something. See, very similar to that. Uh, one of my other fine lines. 
So this cap was kind of grungy. It took a good polishing to get it to really shine. And the body, the barrel, you can see it's kind of shiny now compared to what it was. Uh, and let me take this off and let me show you that nib now looks nice. And this section was the grungiest. It was the worst out of the whole thing. Now look at it. Some good cleanup. So I tore it apart. Um, it's kind of funny because it says may need a little light cleaning. Well, when I I could tell from the pictures that this section was not seating properly inside the barrel. Uh, so it just I just pulled it off, and of course the sack was broken off and crusted around the little nipple there, and uh, all the <laughs> the crusted up uh, sack was all inside the pen. Shake it all out, and the lever would work perfectly. I will, uh, one of the things about these levers, I like the way Schaefer did their levers because they lift pretty easily. They will bounce back up um, afterwards, and you, if you pull it up, it'll lock into place. So I do like that. This has a nice little steel nib on it, and um, there are three, at least three different uh, nibs that were readily available and were popular. And I think this was like a three, four, three. So uh, they came in like fine, extra fine, and medium. I'll put up a graphic right about here, <laughs> that will tell you some of that. Uh, but this particular nib. I've got some better pictures of it, but there is what it's like. So what I did was I, I took the feed and the nib right out of that section. I knocked that out pretty handily. I uh, was able to throw it all in my ultrasonic cleaner, and it cleaned up really nicely. Just going through an ultrasonic with, with just one uh, cycle through it, it actually cleaned up fairly nicely, and I cleaned up the barrel, and I cleaned up the, uh, the cap as well in that cleaner, and then took it back and proceeded to dry them off, polish them up. So, one of the things um, that I noticed about the fine lines, they're not quite the quality, like the, the celluloids um, out of the 1930s are spectacular, especially the jade celluloid. I think the jade celluloid is my favorite from Schaefer. I've got a nice little jade celluloid ring top um, that actually needs to be you know, cleaned up and put back, but they're, you know, the nice flat heads. I really like uh, some of the uh, those nice Schaefer oversize especially. I, I want to get some nice Schaefer oversize celluloids from the 30s. I, I don't really, I don't know so I've got any oversized ones. But anyway, a few things I noticed about this. I could tell it's lower end in its quality. A matter of fact, what I noticed here on, on the the section is there's actually a seam and I can feel it right there and it almost feels like an injection molded plastic um, so I don't know if that puts it in the 40s or into the 50s uh, using injection molding but um, I could see and I can more importantly feel it where there's just a vertical line here on the side and I saw something inside was just like a little tiny tab stuff that you would find from the injection molding process that never got sanded off properly or was meant to be able to be seen kind of thing because it wasn't a uh, um, it wasn't the kind of process where it was expected to look seamless because it's a lower end pen another thing that I noticed about this particular pen and I don't know if it's from use or if it's from design that it is not in perfect round I know that sometimes you can get a little stress bulge, especially in here, right in there, and I can feel. It's easier to feel it sometimes than to see it, but when I hold it up and I twirl it, I can actually see it's actually a little bit out of perfect round. But you know what? <laughs> Look, I'm not a professional. I don't do this so I can buy pens, turn around, and sell them. I buy them to tinker with, to play with, and for my personal enjoyment. So I'm willing to take a chance on this. When I looked at this, I was, you know, for six bucks, including shipping, as crappy as that pen looked, let's give it a shot. I'm willing to risk six dollars on something. A, a worst case scenario, I get a nib out of it. Uh, you know, a vintage uh, fine line nib that I may be able to use in a different pen. And, uh, you know, I get a little more experience playing with it. So I went ahead and ordered it. And for under $2, because ink sacks are about a buck and a half, dollar seventy-five, two dollars $2, depending upon from where you get them. I just bought a bunch of them in a collector's pack. Um, and uh, so it took a number 17 sack. 
One of the things I've noticed here lately is um, my 17s, my last, that Waterman that I just did here recently, the tape right, was also a number, number 17 or 18, depending upon exactly what portion of that little nipple that you would uh, measure it at. But for the second time, it said 17, and I got a 17 sack, and it was a little tight, a little difficult to get on. So one of several things. Number one, my caliper could be just a hair off. Um, in which case I've got other calipers and I can try those in the future and double check one against the other to see if one of them may be off. Number two, uh, it could be that uh, the sack is just a hair tight. Or number three, when it said 17 sack, it wasn't really a 17 sack that was thrown in. It could have been a 16 sack that was thrown into that little bag. Anyway, um, so I got it to go on and it wasn't the easiest and it wasn't the hardest fit for an ink sack to go on but it was and I, I again I, I didn't do the video of it because I just wanted to play with it I, just, not, I was, got too excited about wanting my new toy wanted to see what I could do with it when I had the opportunity so you've seen the before you've now seen the after and uh, let's go ahead and put pen to paper and let's see how my new toy new to me anyway from I'm guessing in the 1940s actually writes alright so the Schaefer fine line with a 343 nib in it so again let me give you a good look at it nice and sparkly that, uh, that polished up really nicely on that, that cap the cap doesn't say anything to it now you can see that there's the barrel imprint that's still pretty strong and uh, I'll put that barrel imprint up here on the screen for you if I haven't already done that. And the cap does post nicely on that nice rounded end here. Fits nice and secure. You know, it's a fairly light pen. And one of the things I liked about uh, these Schaefer's is it gives you a, a decent length. To me, that's just a little... It's, it's, I can write with it, but it's a little light. I like my pens with just a hair more heft to it than what I'm feeling here from this plastic body. Uh, and uh, the lightweight section and nib. That doesn't back weight it, but it gives it just a hair more heft. That actually feels better in my hand with it capped. Uh, so that's one of the things I do like about some of these, uh, these older pens like this. So let's go ahead and see how she writes. So this is, so this is a, a fine line which is a Schaefer sub-brand. Right. This one has a 343 nib on it, which uh, from what I've read, which is from what I've read is a medium nib. And it being, having been an inexpensive uh, lower end model, I don't expect a lot of performance out of it. Um, I did check tine alignment on it and everything looked decent. It writes fairly smoothly. I've used it both on a Rhodia dot pad and when I was testing just on some regular copy paper that I had here on my desk. Um, and it's not the smoothest, but it's not scratchy at all. It's actually very acceptable to me. And on the Rhodia pad here, it's actually writing, it seems, a little finer than it was earlier. So this said that it was a medium nib. There's somebody else who speculated that that number was for a broad. But um, on a message board I looked at, somebody said, no, I think uh, the 343 uh, seems to be a medium in their numbering system. You can get a little bit of line variation out of this old pen. Strokes like that sideways are just a hair on the scratchy side up and down none of that is scratchy but what I was just doing like that a little bit of scratch so I may yet smooth that out just a little bit so that's not bad not bad reverse you can just get an extra fine line out of that it actually writes better in reverse than I thought it would and you know, right there is about as scratchy as it was on the side to side. So like I said, I may take this down just a little bit um, and give it a little bit of smoothing <clears throat> just to give it just a little bit better of a feel to it. Um, but it's very acceptable. I wouldn't hesitate to be able to use this pen uh, for an everyday writer. And that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing today uh, as well, is use this one as my everyday writer. So... 
Encouragement, folks. I mean, I've heard from several of you who said that you have watched some of my videos and you have been encouraged to pick up uh, some vintage pens and uh, try restoring them. Um, and you know what? Fantastic. I say go for it. And if it's something that you want to do and spend a little bit of time and effort and patience in learning how to do it, then please do. Like I said, I'm not a professional. I just tinker with it. I just have fun with it. And I do this as a hobby. And I figured, you know, six bucks, less than two dollars for, uh, uh, for a sack and a little bit of my time. I have less than eight dollars invested in this pen. And I was just thinking too, you can see the fine line logo there on that clip. Right there. So, anyway guys, um, this looks so much better. And I'm so... I'm so happy with how this turned out compared to how it looked when I first got it. And like I said, I knew it would look grungy on, on, online just from the pictures. And when I got it, it was like, ooh, boy, those pictures cert certainly didn't lie. It looked nasty. Um, and now I look at it, and it's shiny, and it's smooth, uh, and it writes well. So I chalk this up as another win.